Hey, it's great to be with you. And boy, just listening to that weather report, maybe there is some hope. You know, I have to remind my staff about once every three months, the most important issue back home is the weather and the drought. So Absolutely. that's a little bit better news for us. Yeah. Absolutely. I think just, uh, I think it was yesterday we actually got some rain down in, uh, in, uh, Southeast Kansas, which is kind of opposite of last year. Uh, the drought rule hit really hit heavy on Southwest Kansas. And then we're looking to be real dry in Southeast. So every, everything works out. All you got to do is have faith. Really. That's all you really got. That's, that's right. Now we just need to get some there to the Flint Hills where I was born and raised and, uh, get some relief for the ranchers. Absolutely. Well, Senator Marshall, if you don't mind, let's go ahead and just get right into the meat and bones of this. Uh, are we all good with that? Absolutely, yes. All right. So you are currently on a mental health awareness campaign this week. Now, with this campaign for mental health awareness uh, for farmers and uh, rural areas, what are the goals with this campaign? Uh, wh- what are you hoping to see? Yeah, well, I just hope that every farmer and rancher out there knows that they're not alone, that that we understand the pressures that they're under. September is National Suicide Prevention Month, and suicide, believe it or not, is a bigger killer than, than farm accidents are out on the farm and ranch. It's, it's one of the top killers uh, for young farmers and ranchers. So just a little bit of education, but most, mostly I want every farmer and rancher to know that the pressure they're feeling is very real. And that we're all feeling it. Uh, we, you know, we talked about the drought. But along with that is the interest rate, and just not the interest rate, but how fast the interest rate has went up. Um, Infos costs have went up as well. So there, the, these pressures are very real. We understand them. And then we want to, uh, we want other, you know, be a good neighbor. We want folks to start realizing what it looks like. Uh, maybe some of those signs and symptoms when you see one of your neighbors, your family members struggling and that there's help out there. So let's just do a little education. And, and mostly, I, and I appreciate WIBW giving us a little platform here to talk about it. You guys are, are known certainly as one of the great voices in agriculture uh, across the state of Kansas. And I'm sure you reach up into Nebraska as well. I appreciate you giving us some time to talk about it. Oh, it's absolutely our pleasure. You know, uh, mental health is a very serious issue. And unfortunately, uh, sometimes it is, it is, I don't know if the right word is underrepresented, but almost undermined from uh, people saying, oh, it ain't nothing. But sometimes it sometimes it is something and, and, and it is something people need to keep an eye out for. And like you said, lend your neighbor that helping hand. Right. Um, this is very real. Again, the stressors have never been greater financially. This may be one of the toughest, if not the toughest year since the 1980s for farmers and ranchers to make it. And, I, and again, I think just to do a little education for your listeners out there, if one of your neighbors, maybe it's your spouse, uh, maybe it's your brother or sister that's struggling as well, family members, you know, the spouses of the person that's sitting out there on that tractor are having lots of stressors as well. But what you're going to see is a person that's having problems sleeping. They're waking up in the middle of the night typically, and they can't go back to sleep. And that early on, that person may complain to you that, gosh, I'm just – really tired, I can't sleep anymore. That's a cardinal sign that they need to go see their doctor. You know, maybe they're, uh, maybe they've dropped out of your card group. Maybe they dropped out of going to church or not going to the high school football game. Be a good neighbor. Invite that person back uh, to, to your card group. Invite them back to Sunday school. Ask them how they're doing. Uh, you try to go do something with them and just communicate that you're struggling too. I mean, we're all struggling right now in the world of agriculture. So try to be looking for those soft symptoms. Maybe they say something like, uh, gosh, maybe my family would be without me. And, you know, the one, you know, one pressure that so many folks are feeling out there is this multi-generational burden that they don't want to be the generation that lost the farm. So many of us, like myself, I'm a fifth generation uh, farm kid. Now, I'm not active on the farm. There's other family members doing that. Uh, but but this multi generational pressure is very real as well. Absolutely. Now, uh, in this awareness campaign, uh, am I right in seeing that you've already had a couple roundtable discussions? You just had one here recently in uh, Topeka at the uh, Kansas Soybean Association building. Now, from these roundtable discussions, can you tell us if there has been a any reoccurring concerns that have been brought up with you 
and uh, anything that has been really sticking out to these organizations and people that you've been talking to who want to know about these resources that we do have in the state? Right. Um, I Actually, I've been very, very impressed. Uh, all my commodity association groups, Farm Bureau, and whether it's uh, – you know, the, the Kansas corn or can, or the Kansas wheat, uh, soybean, sorghum, uh, all of them are integrating this mental health into their education of the folks in their own, own association. And, and board members and county leaders are all taking it seriously to educate themselves what it looks like to have some signs and symptoms of depression or someone that might be suicidal and then what to do. So we also brought the mental health programs. Uh, and as well, just have a conversation about the programs that they're offering. And I think that even some of those commodity groups were pleasantly uh, uh, surprised that there's even more resources out there than we thought. Kansas State Extension uh, was received grant money from us through the previous farm bill that, that Senator Roberts, Senator Moran, and myself and others had worked on. That money is coming to fruition now. Uh, one of the other things we worked on was setting up a 988 hotline. So anybody could call or text 988. And really, within about 30 seconds, you're going to get a person on the line to talk to you about, about your mental health and your situation. And then they can plug you into some mental health services. And you can do that from your tractor now. You can do telemedicine. You can do it by, just by phone. Uh, there's lots of other resources out there that you don't have to go park in front of a mental health center. And that's one of the biggest challenges uh, that we have is that folks don't want to go park in front of a mental health center. And I, I get that. Uh, we also have community health centers that people can go to as well, regardless of your ability to pay. Yeah, you're right uh, about people not wanting to go to that building. Now, whether that's just because they don't want to be seen there, they may think it's embarrassing or whatnot, or it, maybe they just don't have the time to get out of the field. Maybe they're too worried about what they have in their field, be it their crops, their cattle, their livestock, their family, other issues like that. And as you've been saying, the stresses on our farmers and ranchers have really not been seen since, like you said, the, the farming crisis in 1980 and probably even the Great Depression back then. And it it is a severe amount of pressure for our farmers and our ranchers. Now, you talk about the, uh, the 988 National Suicide Hotline in 2018 uh, for rural health uh, for rural health care in the 2018 farm bill uh, you just touched on this briefly but maybe we can expand on it a little bit more uh, for the telehealth services and you helped to designate the 988 suicide hotline now with everything that's currently happening with the farm bill with the rapid rising of input costs for chemicals seed feed a fuel a huge one, it is so much stress on everything. Is there anything in this upcoming farm bill that uh, is looking to be helping for that mental health type of situation? Well, what a farm bill does, among other things, is give a farmer certainty. And when they're going to that bank to renew their operation loan. And by the way, I think many listeners don't understand a farmer is very leveraged today, that they typically have a million-dollar operation loan, and to see that interest rate go from 7 to 9% has basically eliminated all the profit from their business. Um, what a farm bill does, uh, I, I can tell you most banks will not do a loan unless a farmer has crop insurance. And that crop insurance, of course, is, is funded through a farm bill to some extent. So that's number, been the number one priority. But the big challenge right now in a farm bill is, is getting reference prices raised. And the reference prices, again, your, your folks in the ag community know exactly what we're talking about, the Title I program uh, for the PLC program. Um, so we're, we're, that, that's the challenge right now is to get those reference prices up. And we all want to do it. The challenge is where to find the money. Yes, sir. Now, uh, Senator, we are going to go ahead. We, uh, we have to take a quick two-minute break. We'll be right back here on 580-WYBW with more from Senator Roger Marshall, MD, talking on his mental health awareness campaign. We'll be back here on 580-WYBW. Issues with Slade Wiley. 
We are back here on 580 WIBW, the Ag Issues Program, speaking with Senator Roger Marshall about his mental health campaign he's running throughout here in Kansas. Now, Senator, we just got done talking about the different roundtable discussions you've had, the different experiences uh, that, that we've seen here in Kansas with mental health and, and the struggles that our farmers are going through. And also, we briefly touched on the 2018 Farm Bill where you helped expand the telehealth services and designate the 98 National Suicide Hotline. As we kind of head in our second half of our Ag Issues program here, can you tell us just from what, just from your experience, from what you've seen here in Kansas, our resources that are available to our farmers and ranchers and producers, how prepared, I suppose is the right word, are we to help these men and women who are struggling with their mental health? Well, Slade, I, I think we've had a big effort the last five years. Again, I didn't just wake up thinking about this yesterday. Again, Senator Roberts Moran, myself, five years ago, saw this rising tide of, of mental health challenges. And we put funding in the Farm Bill then. Uh, K-State, uh, K-State Extension Office has been working on this for for at least um, longer than five years, but a big focus, educating uh, all the ag association, ag, uh, educating ag lenders as well, uh, the, the going into the, the uh, commodity associations and, and educating people, and then and educating mental health officials. I think that I, I was really impressed from our roundtable, and I appreciate you stopping by and listening as well. I think a good reporter is out there learning, a journalist is learning everything they can, that they certainly, that those folks understand what's going on in the ag community. And I would say most every one of those uh, mental health officials uh, have some connection to agriculture. Again, you know, they were raised on the farm, their spouse, their dad, their cousin, somebody is working on the farm, they understood the pressure. So our mental health centers and our community health centers, we have 32 mental, uh, 32 community health centers across the state, and they're obligated by law to see people regardless of their ability to pay. So those resources are there. K-State Extension is out there as well. Um, you know, and the one piece of the puzzle I would just want to encourage as well, is typically spouses and daughters recognize what's going on, and they're feeling the pressure as well. And they may be the ones that need to go get some help uh, as well. You know, they're feeling the pressure. You mentioned earlier that farmer is saying there's always one more chore to do on the farm and ranch, always one more. And you don't take, take the time to go in and get your blood pressure checked. Uh, it's really a challenge to get people to go in and, and get their mental health check up. Yes, sir. Now, as we kind of head to a close here on 580 WIBW's Ag Issues program, I want to ask you briefly, uh, we discussed this uh, in our uh, uh, talks a little bit before we had our Ag Issues program, uh, would you mind giving us a brief update on the Farm Bill as we near the end of our program and as we approach that September 30th deadline? Just kind right. of, uh, what so, we're uh, as, as you're, you bet. So, Slade, as your listeners know, the current farm bill expires here in a couple weeks. There are mechanisms in place to keep all that funding in place and programs as they are until the end of end of December. So, what's going to happen is in December we'll write a probably a year long extension and go back at it and keep working. Uh, right now, it's just a, uh, strictly a money issue. On the, on the SNAP programs, the nutrition program, the 2018 Farm Bill thought we'd be spending $65 billion a year on food programs. Right now, we're spending like $180 billion a year on food programs. So inflation is impacting the Farm Bill in many ways, and we have, you know, frankly, have just uh, maybe overextended our, ourselves a little bit on the SNAP program. So we need to get people back to work and encourage them to, to take care of their own families. Always glad to help out farmers and ranchers. We feed not only America, we feed the rest of the world. We're proud to do that. But the, but the food programs are taking such a large part of the farm bill, there doesn't seem to be as much money left for what the, real, what the farm bill is originally about, and that's to pay for crop insurance and the Title I program. So you're going to see in the news the next month or so a little bit of a throwdown uh, discussing with my friends across the aisle about trying to get more money to raise reference prices. I think that's what the final battle is about. 
And that's why I'm on the act committee is to fight for our farmers and ranchers in the state of Kansas. Yes, sir. Now, if uh, any of our producers who are currently listening have actually taken a look at the budget for the farm bill, uh, the amount of money, like you said, is I can't imagine what one billion dollars looks like. You know, uh, uh, it's yeah. it's it is a huge amount of money. And uh, right now, with the current inflation that we're having, and and with the input costs and everything that we've already talked about, it's it's gigantic. It it it, it really is. And uh, uh, we'll just have to see how it all rolls out, and and hope people like you uh, who are on our ag committee can uh, help give our farmers the best deal. Right, and just to emphasize, farmers only get five percent of the farm bill now. Eighty um, percent of it's going to go to food programs, uh, maybe five percent to some conservation programs, and some, and then whatever's left for that rural economic development. Uh, but we, have, if we're going to have to call it a farm bill, we need to make sure the farmers and ranchers are taken care of. Everybody else has been taken care of, but let's come back to to the folks that feed and clothe the world and uh, work on the on this reference pricing. That's that's my battle here the next several months. Well, all right, Senator. Thank you so much for joining us here on our Ag Issues program here this morning. Uh, it's always great to talk to you, whether we meet at events or or whether uh, we get the opportunity to chat like this on the radio. I do appreciate it. You bet. And remember, everybody, you can call or text 988 if you're having a mental health challenge. And probably the best thing you do for your mental health is to go to that K-State game this weekend. It's a night game. So, you know, maybe by 5, 4 or 5 o'clock you can get finished and go see the Wildcats and get us back on the victory side. Yes, sir. Go Cats. Here we go, Ema. <laughs> Take care, Slate. Thank you. You too. Thank you very much. That was Senator Roger Marshall talking about his mental health awareness campaign he's currently running and also briefly touching on what we've been seeing in the Farm Bill. Now, we do appreciate him coming on. Now, once again, as he said, that 988 National Suicide Hotline is a telehealth service. So if you're on a tractor, wherever you are, just call or text 988. They'll get someone on with you. Make sure that you're taken care of. Now, you're listening to 580 WYBW and FM 104.9. We've come to the end of our Ag Issues program. We will be right back after these messages.